All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakakwadash, and a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone through the well. And salute me, much love to you since we're brothers who push this truth week in a week out. Y'all brothers stay strong. We almost home. And uh I'm pretty sure you brothers have been paying attention to the news, man. Uh there's a lot of talk about gun control, new gun laws, and all this other gun safety and all this other shit because you got all this chaos going on here. You got this big crime wave, you got all these mass shootings, man. And us here in the truth, we know who orchestrated most of them damn mass shootings, man. It's the so-called white man, Esau Edom, by way of his government. By way of his government, man. We know that shooting that happened in Buffalo, that was, that wasn't nothing but the government. You know, same thing in, uh, what's that place, Uvalde, that happened to the Latinos, all of them, man. Damn near all of them. Even a lot of them mass shootings that happen in the hood, where you think it's black on black, or... Uh, uh, Latino on Latino or, you know, Latino on black. He do a lot of that. that. That's Esau working his magic in a lot of those cases, man. You know, because what's his thing? What's he, what does he love to say? Order out of chaos, man. Order out of chaos. They want to come take your guns. Act like they're the good guys and they're the heroes. But here it is the whole time. They were just one orchestrating the damn shootings, man. And even the ones that Esau not involved in, he still got his hand in it. He still got some blame in it because he the one put the damn guns out there in the first place. Whether they be the legal ones or the illegal ones, Esau put them out there. The illegal ones, they uh, were brought in by uh, trains, uh, different immigrant groups that got guns, that got these different stores. They sell guns on the low. Like these Arabs and shit. You know? Different agents bringing guns in. Hey, he saw you brought them guns in. Yeah, them niggas killing each other, you know? They picked the guns up and killed each other. They gonna, they gonna pay for that. But you got some blame for that too, man, for bringing that shit in here, man. You know you messed the minds of our people up, man. You messed the minds of our people up, man. And then put guns and drugs in the neighborhood. You know that's a recipe for disaster. You know, and I'm going to say this. We all got the right to defend ourselves. I think everybody got the right to own a gun. The scriptures don't, con don't condemn you arming yourself. But you should never trust in the gun. You should never trust in your weapons, man. The only weapon you should trust in is this truth. This is what you should mainly arm yourself with right here. This truth. Warm yourselves with this faith and this truth, man. And um, I'm going to get a... Uh, you know, I'm going to jump to Psalms 44 real quick. Psalms 44. Psalms 44. And verse 6. And this is King David speaking, man. It says, For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Neither shall my sword save me. So, a man after the Most High's own heart. Very faithful man. The most, one of the Most High's most favorite men, King David. Said he will never trust in his bow. And neither shall his sword save him, man. He don't trust in that. He was excellent with the sword and he was excellent with the bow. King David was a mighty man of war, man. But he didn't even trust in that. He trusted in Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shah. That's what he trusted in. That's what he got his faith in. You know? He was trusting in the gun and the pistol and the chopper and, a, and all this other shit. No, that's the way of the wicked. That's the way of Esau. We don't trust in that, right? But like I said, it's okay to arm yourself, have you, you know, have you a little protection. Now, when we go out there on the highways and byways, we don't supposed to have no pistol and none of that on us, man. We just, we arm ourselves with this, this, this word, man. You know? And we shoot down or chop down all opposition with this truth, man, with these words. This holy sport. You know? But that, like I said, there's nothing wrong with owning a gun for, like, home protection or, you know, to protect yourself out here in these streets. Because we know how wicked it is out here, man. 
So verse 7, but thou hast saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hate us. Exactly. The Lord is going to save us from our enemies. Who was our number one enemy? Esau, Edom. He saved it. He's going to save us from him and these other nations. Man. He's going to save us from them too. And has put them to shame that hated us. Exactly. The Lord is going to put these devils to shame. Here it is. Y'all trusting in y'all gun. Y'all want to disarm us. And trust in your own guns. Because the government, they trust in guns. They trust in their military. They trust in their power, man. They trust in their nuclear missiles. All these secret weapons they got. And not just the higher level devil, but the low level devil. They love their guns, boy. They love their guns. And they want to see us disarm too. Because all this shit about disarming, all this news about these new gun laws, that's all really for Jake, man. That's all really for Jake, because you look at American history, whenever they did a damn gun confiscation or a gun buyback, a gun confiscation or a gun buyback, it was always in the hood, either black or Latino hood. Just take Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, for example. Esau was going door to door, taking guns. He had his guns in his hands with his military and his SWAT teams. He got, they got... Fucking fully automatic machine guns, bro. At your door. With bulletproof vests on and fatigues on, man. Ready to pop your damn head off with helicopters flying off. But they want your gun, though. See, all that gun conversation is about disarming Jake, man. Because Jake is the number one threat. And, of course, they also want to disarm you, 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 you Edomites who are anti-government. You're anti-government. They want to get y'all too, man. But they really want Jake first thing foremost. But the Lord said he's going to save us from them that hate us. <laughs> in Yahweh we boast all the day long and praise the name forever. Salah. So we're going to boast in Yahweh, boast in Yahweh, shine, praise his name. And he's going to save us from you bastards, man. Y'all going to fall on your own swords, man. Y'all going to kill each other. Y'all yeah, gonna kill many, many of our people, but y'all gonna manly really kill each other, man. Because Esau is beefing with each other real heavy right now. Real heavy right now. And the scriptures talk about a house divided against itself. It shall not stand, man. It shall not stand, man. And uh, Esau, you, you're never gonna have any peace either because you're the wicked. As a matter of fact, Isaiah 48, 22, it says, There is no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. Ain't no peace to the wicked, man. Esau's, ever since you've been in dominion, these last little what? Since your renaissance, these last little 500 years or whatever, there has been no peace on this earth. There's all, it's just been bloodshed after bloodshed. This devil has not been able to put his sword down. He's been at war with these people, that people, and that people. And he stay at war with us, whether you know it or not. No peace onto this devil. He gotta keep. He gotta keep his gun and, and keep his sword and keep his military at war with all these other nations. Because he's the wicked. He's been killing and he's been getting killed. You know. And the scriptures talk about he that kill it with the sword. You must be killed with the sword. And what Yahweh Shah say out of his own mouth? He didn't come to bring peace. When he make his return, he ain't coming to bring no damn peace, man. The only peace that the only people that's gonna get peace is his elect. But that's after the, after the wars. Because the elect gonna get their hand in that too and do damage, man. And tear shit up in the name of Yahweh Yahweh Shah. And once again, Yahweh Shah said he didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. But a sport. Now, who is the main man on this planet killing with the sword? The so called white man and his military. Killing with the sword, man. So the Lord said he come to get y'all with the sword, man. Because y'all touched the apple of the Lord's eye. His people. The Israelite people. You know? So Esau, you would never feel peace in your belly. And we know that you're about to try to fill your belly. But you're going to vomit all that up, man, as it says in the uh, book of Job, man. So all this crime wave going throughout America, all this chaos. 
<laughs> That's a curse unto you, man. Even though we know you orchestrated a lot of this, but it's all going to blow up in your face, man. Let it be a curse unto you. <laughs> this devil got nerd to talk about you trying to disarm people, but here it is. He's about to bring the draft and put guns right back in your hands. I forgot who said that, but that made perfect sense. He's talking about disarming everybody, but here it is. He's about to bring a draft and put the guns right back in your hand for you to go fight uh, Russia and China and uh, Iran and et cetera, man. You know? That's how this devil is, man. That's how this devil is. But, uh, let me see here. Yep, this is, uh, Psalms. Let me jump back to Psalms. Psalms 55. 21. It says, uh, No, I'm going to start at verse 20. Psalms 55 and 20. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. Exactly. Esau, you put your hands against everybody. None of these nations ever bothered you, man. And the main people you put your hand against is Jake. And most of these Jake still don't even hate you for it. That's the crazy part. At all you done nine people, Jake is nice as hell to you devils, man. But you still hate us. And you don't even know why. And you don't even know why. You come up with all these excuses why you hate us because oh, we thugging and uh, we're drug dealers and oh, we're deadbeat dads and baby mamas and all that. You made us into all that shit, nigga. You don't even know the real reason you hate us, man. It's a deep, it's a deep seated. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you don't even know the real reason you hate us. The reason you hate us that you have this deep seated hatred. It's deep in your spirit. It's a spiritual thing, man. This this goes all the way back to the Genesis, man. Story of Jacob and Esau when we finessed your ass out of your birthright and your blessings, man. <laughs> we supplanted your ass, man. <laughs> because you hated your birthright. <laughs> hey, you didn't give a damn. You don't give a damn about the most high. You're all for yourself. You know? So that's what, that's another story, man. You know, go back to Genesis. I think that's what, 25th chapter, all the way through the 27th. Go on back there and check out why you really hate us. Why it's really in your spirit to hate our guts, man. Even though we really ain't never did shit to y'all, for real. You know? So, uh, this is that Psalms 55 and 21. It says, uh, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softened in oil, yet were they drawn swords. Exactly. You got Edomites on the news crying and shit because of that mad shooting that happened to them little school kids in, uh, what was that, Texas. You know? In Texas and these other places. They acting like they crying and acting like they care. The words of their mouth are smoother than butter. You got Joe Biden on the news. <laughs> These kids are careful. They oh, that's just so horrible. But yeah, it was they drawing swords. They about to come with it. They want disarmament because they about to come with it. They about to come with the sword. That's the games they play. That's the games they play, man. Scriptures tell you about Esau pursuing his brother with the sword, man. The most high ain't gonna have no mercy on you, Esau. You can't repent either. You got to pay for this shit. Because they about to do a lot of killing out here, man. A lot of killing. They about to get rid of so-called undesirables. And who are the undesirables? The man who's believing Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah. The man who believes in his truth. They want us dead. Or they want to break us and have them, and have us worship them. So I can. Then you got these low-level devils scared because they, they think the government finna take their guns. And they scared that Jake, because Jake, they know Jake got a lot of uh, unregistered firearms. So-called illegal guns. So Esau like, hey man, I ain't trying to, I'm not, these low-level devils, they like, uh, I'm not trying to be out here with no guns. And these niggas got guns. You know, our enemy got guns. Shit, what the hell? So the low-level devil saying they're going to fight the government, their own government, 
and Jake. And kill Jake in the process. So <laughs> and then the upper, the higher level devil saying this, they saying they're gonna kill the low level devil and Jake in the process. So Jake, we in trouble, man. We in trouble, man. And when they didn't bring them damn blue hats in, we in trouble. So you better, you better be trusting in your how about you shot, man. You better put your faith in him, because if not, your noodles gonna get knocked the fuck out in these times. It tell you in second edge 15 chapter that people was gonna do what's in their power. Matter of fact, let me see if I can get that real quick. Second address 15. Fifteen and fourteen, it says, "Woe to the world and them that dwell in therein." Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw it nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another people, and with swords in their hands. So you got World War Three, and you got civil war, and you got race war, with swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among sedition among men, and invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their action shall stand in their power. And guns are power. You know? So the course of people's actions is going to stand in their power. And most people are owned in this society. So people are going to be shooting each other down, man. Liberals killing conservatives. Conservatives killing Democrats. Democrats killing uh, Republicans, you know? Jake killing each other and Esau. You know, you know man, people going to do what's in their power, man. This shit about to break loose. And you can see it. People getting worse by the day, man. People getting more and more hateful and arrogant. And, man, this shit getting worse by the day. I can't even bear being around people no more. Like, <laughs> I can't bear it. <laughs> Something end up happening, man. I, I just can't be around people, man. I mean, but people going to do what's in their power, man. People are gonna do what's in their power, man. So uh let me see something. Let me see something. Let me see something. Let me see 26. Let me see what Yahweh Shah said when they tried to take him, man. Well, when they did take him. When they did take him to be crucified or executed for our sins, man. When I say our sins, I mean the sins of the 12 lost tribes of Israel, man. Today, that would be you Negroes and you Latinos. So, uh. Okay. This is when they came to lay hands on you. How I shall take him, man. So, uh, I'm going to start at Matthew 26 and 50. And Yahweh Shah said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Yahweh Shah and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Yahweh Shah stretched out his hand and drew a sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. And said Yahweh Shah, and Salaki, and then said Yahweh Shah unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. All they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So you got dummy groups out there like ISUPK and other Israelite groups who are more than likely agents portraying us out there with guns and we are, and got us on the, well, not us, but them. They got themselves on these different news, documentary channels and shit with guns at the gun range and all these big ass assault rifles. That ain't nothing but a setup, man. Yahweh Shah said, all those that take the sword, you're going to perish with the sword, man. You're going to perish with the sword, man. Them niggas know what the scriptures say, but they wicked. They hirelings, man. Well, we know at least the people, the man who's leading them is a hireling. You know? So, hey, y'all going to be put to death if y'all don't repent, man. 
Y'all don't repent, y'all gonna be put to death, man. Matter of fact, I'm gonna stay in Matthews, chapter 4. Chapter 4, 17. From that time, Yahweh Shah began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Exactly. We need to be repenting. We know all this shit finna kick off. We need to be repenting, man. Repent. Repent. Playtime should have been over, man. We should have all been getting ourselves right, adorning ourselves, preparing ourselves for the coming of the day of the Lord, man. Which is going to be an ugly day. Extremely ugly day. You know? A, a very terrifying and scary day. We should all be preparing ourselves for that. I'm talking about you Israelites out there, you so-called Negroes, you Latinos, and Native Americans, man. But the ones y'all don't want to prepare, the Lord got something for that ass. I mean, shit. He got something for that ass, man. And you know what? I'm going to jump to Galatians real quick, man. I'm going to jump to Galatians, man. Hold on. Galatians 5. 5. And uh, 22. See, if people would practice this, practice this right here, you wouldn't even have a problem with people murdering each other left and right. Check this out. This is uh, the fruits of the spirit. This is Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love. <laughs> ain't, ain't too much love out here, man. <laughs> but that's prophecy. The love of many shall wax cold. It said the fruit of the spirit is love. Which, which, which when you dig into that, what love is according to the Bible is keeping the commandments and laws and statutes, man. So the fruit of the spirit is to keep Lord, the Lord's laws, statutes, and commandments. Joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Gentleness, long suffering, goodness, faith, peace. Meekness, which is humbleness. Temperance, against such as there is no law. Yeah, so it's supposed to be a Christian nation, but nobody don't practice the fruits of the spirit, man. Nobody know. Nobody practice these things like this race, man. <laughs> Except some men in the truth. I won't even say everybody in the truth practice that. I can say some men practice that, man. You know? But this society is the opposite of everything that I just read in that chapter right there, man. The average person is the opposite of that. That's how they live, and that's why it's chaotic, man. You know, but I'm going to leave it right there, man. All praise to Yahweh Bashan Yahusha, Bashan Rakakwadash, Shalom to the hopeful elect, Kwam Yahshua, and the Bible.